Uh, very good morning. Uh, welcome to my presentation on the post-match recovery strategies with the research findings we have done on the metabolic, hormonal, fluid and electrolyte responses in badminton, uh, specifically with the junior badminton players in India. Uh, the backdrop for the study, uh, you know, the post-exercise recovery uh, is a very vital component uh, to overall exercise training paradigm, essentially for continued performance in uh, badminton where we have subsequent matches for the players, maybe in the same day or in the next day. And mediate for post-exercise recovery include the damage done to the skeletal muscles, the muscle inflammation, the muscle soreness, the decreased energy substrates, lack of glycogen storage, lack of ATP, and the accumulation of metabolic substrates in terms of lactic acid and the lactic dehydrogenase system. And fundamentally has to do something with the badminton's nature, intermittent nature, very fast-paced with uh, small rest in between. These were the findings we found with the research done with the junior badminton players in India playing at the national level. The maximum heart rate of the male players went up to 204 beats per minute, very high on the heart rate side. Even females, it's comparable, 200 beats per minute. And uh, the average heart rate with which a player operates in the male, it was 178 beats per minute. And in the female, it was 172 beats per minute. But when we look into the metabolic demands of the game, the blood lactate levels, it was 4.02 millimole per liter for the male players and 3.50 which is uh, comparatively lesser than when compared to other games like football and boxing etc so badminton has got a high demand on the cardiovascular system rather than on the metabolic system the temporal characteristics of the game were also studied we looked into how much is the work rest ratio during a match how much of time is the rally time how much is the rest time we found a uh, average work time of 6.8 6.2 seconds and a rest period of 13.2 and 12.3. Maybe 1 is to 1.5 is the average ratio. Maybe this has got some implications for the training where we can have the interval training of this ratio. 1 is to 1.5 can be more applicable. The average duration of the match in men's singles it was 34.75. Women's singles it was 30 for the junior level. I think now the matches even goes up to one hour uh, in the, in the, when it goes to a three set match. So the recovery parameters were studied for the pre, the post, and the 30 minutes recovery. 30 minutes was taken as a uh, recovery timeline for us. We found the heart rate was coming down considerably to the baseline levels. It was okay. But then when we looked into the lactate, the, the 30 minutes was not enough to bring down the lactate to the baseline levels, which shows that there has to be mechanisms or there has to be adequate recovery time for the blood lactate levels to come to the baseline levels. Urine sodium was interestingly found. We found variation in the male and female players. No much physiological explanation for that. Maybe intra-individual variations can be a matter in terms of fluid and electrolyte imbalances of the players. Hormonal responses, we looked for the pre, the post, and the 30 minutes recovery. We looked into the cortisol levels. Also looked into the growth hormone. It showed a similar pattern of elevated levels in the post-match and a considerable lower levels. Maybe this has more to do with the, the psychological system, the stress of the match, the pressure of the match more than the physiological system. Uh, we have not looked into the, the build-up of the stress factors in this, this particular study. So energy demands of badminton, I would say the intermittent nature and the short lasting high intensity efforts interspersed with the frequent rest intervals make badminton uh, a highly demanding game in terms of the lactic acid system, the, the, the lactic uh, energy system. And since the match goes more than 30 minutes, again, the aerobic system is also into play. So both the energy systems are high demanding for a game of badminton. Very high intra-individual variations we found uh, and in the subsequent performances. Range of values for the fluid intake, sweat loss, Electric loss demonstrated large variability among the players. So it was not uh, possible to have a common uh, criteria or modality in terms of how these parameters can change. It depends on the individual. The high variability in the cardiovascular 
and the metabolic responses following badminton matches and the lack of recovery to baseline after 30 minutes for the heart rate, for the lactate and the urine sodium may negatively affect performance in subsequent matches. I think this is more common for the junior level where a player plays maybe two events, singles and doubles, and at the national level you have three or four matches in a day where uh, it's highly demanding in terms of how the player recovers. Unlike the international level, you have one match a day and then uh, a full day of recovery. We had two uh, follow-up studies, cohort studies, with the same players. One was with the effect of post-match recovery drink and uh, ice immersion. We found that a combination of both the recovery drink and the ice immersion was much beneficial in reducing the muscle soreness, the perceived muscle soreness, and uh, a better feeling of uh, recovery for the players. We also had a study on the effect of pneumatic compression device on the recovery of players. And we found that the wearable device, if you have the compression, with a longer duration compression and a high intensity compression was uh, much better in terms of reducing the muscle soreness. Of course, not much to do with the metabolic, the internal system, but the players were feeling much better in terms of how they recovered after that particular uh, recommendations. The high intensity interval training, maybe with a work rest ratio of 0.54 and 0.47 for male, female, uh, uh, 1 to 1.5 can be the adequate ratio for work and rest uh, for the training sessions. Players need to involve in active recovery mechanisms with adequate rest to resume uh, full recovery before the subsequent matches. Schedule of tournaments need to be planned by providing adequate recovery time for players before the subsequent matches. I think there need to be some rule changes as well because until unless you provide three to four hours of recovery, a player may not be able to come back and uh, give his optimal performance in any of the rounds. Practical applications, which can be a take back for the coaches. Post-match, glycogen restoration to prevent compromised performance in subsequent matches. The duration of match going more than 30 or 40 minutes shows that the carbohydrate utilization is also very high, where this has to be uh, taken care during the recovery uh, aspect. Optimum training recovery in terms of the nutritional carbohydrate, protein, and sodium bicarbonate. Very new studies have been done where sodium bicarbonate can be an important uh, utilization where it can reduce muscle inflammation, muscle soreness, and uh, keep the pH levels normal. Augment post exercise and during match recovery, active recovery, maybe a cold water, stretching, massage, compression garments. It depends on which is more uh, familiar and suitable for a particular player. Recovery science, which I would say is under-researched and under-practiced. Maybe we have the training and then we leave it to the players. This has to be monitored so that the player is optimally fit to take the next match uh, in his uh, potential. So badminton specific training and recovery guidelines to be framed considering the health consequences of players. This has reference to the recreational players. Adult players may be playing after 40, 50 years because the game is more demanding on the cardiovascular system. So you need to have a uh, testing whether you are fit in terms of taking the demands of the game, uh, the average heart rate goes in, going up to 170, 175 beats per minute during the match. Thank you. Thank you very much. And it's open for some discussions or some of your observations. Yeah. You mentioned the pneumatic mechanism for the recovery. Yeah. Do you mean the massage guns? No, it's a wearable garment. The wearable, wearable garment. Yeah. But uh, we, we did find that uh, it doesn't have any uh, mechanism in terms of the physiological system. But, but the player feels better. He feels better. And I think that's more important. It's all, it's all in the mind. If you feel better, you play better. And the recovery drink that you analyzed, was it carbon Just chocolate, drink, chocolate drink, milk. Just chocolate, chocolate milk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Any more studies on the sodium side? Because that's very interesting. Sodium bicarbonate, I think it's a new area which is coming up. Yeah, and they say maybe uh, two to three grams per body weight can be an uh, effective dose. Uh, because it, it has got a very uh, important effect in terms of maintaining the pH levels. So that's a very new area. Latest, latest studies are coming up in that. We have not worked on that, but we are definitely going to do familiar for similar studies when they've done similar reviews, but their finding on the sodium was very different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. So I think we need, as coaches, we need to look back, not only in the training, but to see how the player is recovered and how he's back to 
his potential for the next match. It's very important. Maybe in assistance of a good uh, dietitian. Yeah. I think we need to educate the players. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe uh, uh, such sessions, uh, even players need to come in and see. Not everything is understandable, but something which can they take back. If they feel it much better, maybe they follow it in a disciplined manner. So. Uh, I think this is very valuable. You should not undervalue it. <laughs> and uh, sports science is so much into badminton, and it's very competitive. It's important for you to restore the player. Not only his performance, but his health also. So the recovery, the rest is very, very important. Lifestyle routine is very important. Uh, have you been doing with some data with your players? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I've been doing with my players, and fortunately, one of my older players is playing the World Championship here in doubles, Trisa Jolly. So some of the data are of hers. Which we have presented here. Any more? Thank you. Thank you very much.